Welcome to Moriel TV. My name is Joshua here with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, we've had uh, some questions regarding uh, teaching of yours and the use of the word uh, Metatron in witnessing to Jews, evangelizing Jews uh, based on their own literature. There's been false accusations swirling that uh, you uh, are propagating Kabbalistic teaching and so forth, but... Um, is this term Metatron found in Scripture? If so, uh, uh, why, why, is, why is it that you're using this teaching? Well, first of all, the teaching we did on the Metatron is for Messianic apologetics. In other words, evangelizing Orthodox, specifically ultra-Orthodox and Hasidic Jews. If you were going to evangelize Mormons, you would have to read the Book of Mormon. If you're going to evangelize Roman Catholics, you'd have to read an imprimatur catechism with the Nile Abstad. If you were going to evangelize Muslims, you'd have to read the Quran. Well, if you're going to evangelize ultra-Orthodox and Hasidic Jews, you have to read Kabbalistic literature, specifically the Zohar. So we did that. This is purely for evangelistic purposes. Now we prefaced our teaching and we reiterate it now that Kabbalah is absolutely a cult. It comes from Babylonian Gnosticism, repackaged in Jewish terminology, but it is of a cult origin. It is a false belief system of a corrupted Judaism that denies its Messiah. This is not to say there are not true things in it. There's true things in the Jehovah's Witness Watchtower. There are true things in a Roman Catholic Catechism. But it is a cult and it is false, and we only use it to demonstrate to Orthodox Jews that the concept of one God and three persons is found in Judaism. It's found in their own literature. What is our basis for doing this? Well, our basis for doing this is the fact that Paul the Apostle quoted three pagan Greek poet philosophers. Three. He took the literature and the poetry of the pagan philosophy of Athens and he quoted it three times. And under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he put it into the New Testament. The Lord showed him to do it. He took what they believed and used it to support what he believed. One example, baptism on behalf of the dead. Now, the Mormons have taken that and made it into a so-called Christian practice, but there was nothing Christian about it. Paul was referring to a pagan Greek practice of posthumous baptism on behalf of the dead. Paul was simply saying, look, even the pagans, even before you were Christians, you knew that there was an afterlife. That's all he was saying. Three times Paul quoted pagan sources from their poetic literature and philosophy. We have the names, we know who they were from the classic literature. And the Holy Spirit inspired him to put it into the New Testament. Those who object to going to the literature of other faiths in order to evangelize them and to debunk their false beliefs, their argument is not with people like me. Their argument, of course, is with the Word of God, with the New Testament. Uh, I don't know any evangelist to the Mormons who was not well acquainted with the Book of Mormon. I don't know any evangelist to the Muslims who is not well acquainted with the Koran and the Hadith. And so it is, there is no evangelist to the Orthodox Jews and Hasidic Jews who's not acquainted with the Zohar, with the Kabbalistic literature. You need to be the way Paul was, but it's purely for evangelism. Now, these pagan beliefs that Paul cited, the belief systems were false. Hasidic Judaism is a cult. It's false. The Zohar, it's false. It's not holy literature. It's a cult. But you have to deal with what people believe in order to witness to them effectively and to show this one God and three persons that it is not a Christian or a pagan invention, but it was found in Judaism. That's all. Now, some people have objected to this. What they're really objecting to is the New Testament. But let's move on. Is the term itself 
found in Scripture. Well, the term Metatron is found in Scripture, actually, but let's begin with the term Metatron. It is a Hebrew transliteration of the Greek term, meaning at the center or from the middle of the throne, from the center or from the middle of the throne. The word meta means beyond, beyond, uh, like metadata today, or metaphysical, what's beyond the physical, what's beyond the data. It could also in Greek, ancient Greek and in classic Greek, be a synonym in some s situations for next to, para, para. For instance, the Holy Spirit is the paraclete, but he's simply the true vicar of Christ that communicates Jesus to us, okay? So Jesus is the meta, the Holy Spirit's the, the para, but it's one God, so there's the meta. Another example of this would be where it could be a synonym for meso, meaning middle in Greek, meso. But meta is a word generally meaning beyond, sometimes next to, sometimes from the middle, meta, okay? Meta tron, thronos, thronos in Greek. In Hebrew, there's no letter theta. In Greek, you have the TH sound is theta. In Hebrew, there's no such sound. There is instead the letter tav, tav. So instead tav, instead of thronos, it becomes tron, tron, tron. Middle of the throne, metatron. Well, where is this word found? It's obviously found in the Zohar. Hasidic Jews and Orthodox Jews say the angel of the Lord is the metatron. Now, we as Christians know the angel of the Lord with whom Jacob wrestled and so forth is a Christophany, an Old Testament manifestation of Christ, who in Judaism is called Metatron. I'm just going to read from the Greek text of Isaiah chapter 5. When you read chapter 4 and chapter 5, you keep seeing the throne of Jesus is in the middle of the thrones of the 24 elders. The middle throne, the middle throne, the middle throne. I'll just read verse 6. Kai Eldon, I saw, and Mezel to thronon. Meso throno, meso throno in Greek, the middle of the throne. In Hebrew, the transliteration, cum translation, is metatron, the center of the throne, the one who's there. Now, why do the Hebrew translators prefer meta, meta, as a synonym for meso? Because the lamb is on the throne, we see, but on back of the lamb, is Jesus. So, meta throne, the lamb upon the throne. Well, it's not a lamb on back of the, or, or beyond the lamb, not positionally on back of, but beyond the, the lamb, it, it's Christ. Meta throne, meta throne. They see the one on the throne as the metatron. Um, well, yeah, that's, that's what the New Testament says, that Jesus is the metatron. He's the He's the one on the center of the throne. He's the one on the central throne. This was repeated, that he's in the middle throne in Re Revelation 4, 5, and 6. Now, just because the New Testament and the Zohar are in agreement on that point, just because they are congruous on that point does not mean the Zohar is valid literature. It's occult literature. Like many occult things, like the Jehovah's Witness Watchtower, it's a combination of truth and error. Combination of truth and error, but it's false. It's false. It has occult origins. Even though it's right that the angel of the Lord is the Metatron, and we know that's the Messiah, we know that's Jesus, the angel of the Lord who appealed to the wife of Manoah, the father of Samson, what do you ask my name for? It is Paley. It is great. Uh, what's the angel of the Lord? That was Jesus, the captain of the host that Joshua saw. That was Jesus. That was Yeshua. So the people who are ignorantly making a big deal out of 
You're calling the Lord the Metatron. No, the New Testament says he's the one at the center of the throne. They don't know what they're talking about to begin with. What they remind me of is the people, they're doing the same thing. There's people called the Sacred Name Movement. How dare you call Jesus by the pagan Greek name? Or how dare you call Yeshua by the pagan Greek name Jesus? Well, this is absurd. We have 10,000 manuscripts of the gospel, and they all call him Jesus. Jesus. Um, the New Testament originals were, were all written in Greek, with the possible exception of Matthew. Uh, even the Syriac texts we have are copied from the Greek in the manuscript record as we have. The New Testament is fundamentally Greek, and it, it fundamentally quotes from the Greek Old Testament 80% of the time, probably, the Septuagint. How dare you call Yeshua? There's messianic extremists who say this. I once had a lady highly indignant because I, I wrote an article, and it was a theological article. Now, the language of academic theology is German because so much theology, unfortunately, was colored by 19th century German rationalism. And you'll hear even conservative evangelical theologians using terms like Heilsgeschichte or Zeitgeist. Geist, get the word ghost. Um, how dare you say Holy Ghost? That's a pig, that's demonic, that's witchcraft, that's a ghost. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, it, 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 the theological term is Geist. Spirit and ghost are the exact same word in theological German, but they're too ignorant to know it. Um, how dare you call Yeshua Jesus? How dare you say Holy Ghost? How dare you say Metatron? These are just ignorant people. Not worth the time of day, frankly. They don't know what they're talking about. Mesotronos Metatron. It's yeah, Johannes and Johann. It's the same thing. It's simply the transliteration of the same title from one language to another. Now, additionally, the rabbis prefer to say Meta instead of Mizo because they relate the Metatron to the verse, He you keepeth Israel, neither slumbers nor sleeps. Um, they see the Metatron as the angel of the Lord that watches over Israel. And it, Meta comes, comes in Hebrew from the term Mataya, which means keeper of the watchman, keeper of the watchman. So they transliterated and translated Metatron. It's simply a transliteration from Greek into Hebrew. You have many transliterations from Hebrew into Greek in Scripture or Aramaic into Greek. Well, you have it the opposite way as well. That's all there is to it, basically. But we would remind people, Kabbalah is false. Now, we only quote from the Zohar, the main work of Kabbalah. There are other outside later rabbinic traditions who identify the Metatron with Enoch after he was raptured or with an angelic being, or in some case, this is even a demonic being. Uh, Islam has its own version of, of the angel of the Lord. But the Metatron it is definitely he who was at the center of the throne, which Revelation chapters 4 through 6 directly ascribes to Jesus being that person. But just because the Zohar gets that right doesn't make the rest of the Zohar right. Again, it's Kabbalistic, it's a cult. We only use it evangelistically. But yes, the term is in the Bible. Thank you so much for your question. God bless.